It is extremely important to me that the stories we share are authentic and that we strive to tell both perspectives. I've been a local to this remarkable island three times and a tourist too many times to count. Our home year holiday celebrates Aruba. There's a reason why Arubans are so patriotic and there's a reason why visitors keep coming back. Let's dive into the elements that makes Aruba our home and the perfect holiday. Hi everyone, I'm Yen Tolu. Believe it or not, these steps were once in a deteriorated state, but as part of the government and Aruba Tourism Authority's beautification project, we have mosaic art instead. Residents and visitors of this island have a fully restored staircase here at Rogers Beach in St. Nicholas. Tucked away in St. Nicholas is Rogers Beach. Even more tucked away are these beautiful mosaic steps at Rogers. It certainly is unassuming when walking down, but once you reach the bottom and glance up, there's a whole story there. The Aruba Art Fair that began in 2016 as part of a beautification project of St. Nicholas is actually the beginning of this work of art. Tito Boulevard led this staircase initiative. If you can believe it, this stunning staircase is only the beginning. The goal is to refurbish the Hoiberg steps and the Rogers Beach stairs you see here is just the start to something bigger. And when we started with this project back in 2016, there was a dream of doing the haystack of Aruba, which we call in Papiamento Hoiberg. Yes, and as the years progressed, we started manifesting that we want to do the Hoiberg, the haystack. And it kept going, going. We were almost getting there, but then COVID came along. The project for Hoiberg may be on hold, but as soon as Tito and his team heard the government was fixing up the 50 steps of Rogers Beach, a light bulb went off to partner with ATA. So we immediately went to Ata and was like, how about when you guys finish beautifying it, just fixing it, we want to beautify it. And I said, that's an awesome idea. Yeah, so then we can learn what, 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 what entails doing 50 steps. So we can prepare ourselves mentally for the next venture that we would love to do, which is the haystack. So we got the Aruba Tourism Authority involved, the government involved, and it became an instant marriage. Yes, and it became a perfect plan. The theme of the masterful artwork is Land and Sea by international mosaic artist Isadora Paz. Feedback was gathered by nature delegates on the island to find out what animals this area of St. Nicholas is known for. The recommendations may surprise you. That is a whale, and the whale over there, it's a, we actually have whales on Aruba, but we're not known for that. Yes, and this whale glows on, um, in the dark. So at night, many, many fishes um, start glowing. And also the steps on the side, you see the blue, light blue um, um, tiles. They're also glow in the dark tiles. That's so neat. Yeah, okay. so the whole piece actually glows in the dark for a while. So the next time you make your way to Rogers Beach, make sure to get the best seat in the house, which is right there on that platform, because according to Tito, from there is where you can see the full mosaic art. These beautiful steps are part of ATA's maintenance project, but not only are these steps all fixed up, they are certainly Instagrammable, captured by tourists and locals alike. The staircase definitely ties into the overall artistic transformation that St. Nicholas is undergoing. As you notice, Aruba Art Fair only creates murals and mosaic projects in St. Nicholas. Yes, and this is the only steps that we have available in St. Nicholas right now because Rogers Beach is St. Nicholas. Yes, and that's why it's, it's, it's an extended part of what we do. And this is for the people that are going to the beach, that are going to Rogers Beach, can also have a little taste of what we have in the main street. While you are in St. Nicholas, you may want to stop by Rogers Beach. It is a beach that is frequented mostly by locals and it is a beautiful and serene location. 
Unlike its neighbor, Baby Beach, Rogers Beach isn't as likely to be listed as a must-do while in Aruba. But discover Rogers Beach, one of Aruba's most pristine and authentic coastal gems. This cozy white sandy beach is nestled right next to the famous Baby Beach, offering a true local beach experience with clear swimming waters. What sets Rogers Beach apart is its genuine ambiance, enhanced by the presence of colorful fishing boats gently swaying in the calm bay. On weekdays, like today, you'll find this beach to be blissfully quiet, making it the perfect spot to indulge in a good book or simply relish the crystal clear sea. If you prefer a more peaceful and relaxed beach atmosphere compared to the busier Palm Beach and Baby Beach on weekends, then Rogers Beach is an excellent quieter alternative. Fun fact, Rogers Beach is named after British Captain Roger, who played a pivotal role in opening Aruba's first oil refinery, the Aruba Lago Refinery in 1928. Thanks to Captain Roger's leadership, the refinery brought prosperity to Aruba. You can even catch a glimpse of the refinery from Rogers Beach, adding a touch of industrial allure to the already natural beauty. So if you're looking for an authentic and serene beach experience with clear waters and a local touch, head over to to this beach. Whether it's a tranquil weekday escape or a glimpse into Aruba's history, this beach has something special to offer for everyone. Baby Beach is best known for its expansive shallow area, making it a great spot for families. The beach also opens up to the ocean. Typically speaking, this location here is much busier than Rogers Beach since there are a lot of visits from locals and tourists alike. Enjoy the calm lagoon, which is said to be perfect for our young travelers. Besides for the seemingly endless shallow area, the crystal clear water is also an attraction. Yes, there is snorkeling, but recommended for advanced swimmers only within the marked area where the bay opens to the ocean. There's palapas free for use, but Baby Beach is considered a must do while visiting Aruba. So expect to share this beach with visitors and locals of the island. As you venture away from the beaches in St. Nicholas, you could find yourself meeting new friends in the wild. We stopped for a moment on our drive to say hi to this little guy. This city has a lot to offer and the nature plus scenic views you journey through while exploring is by far one of the best experiences of St. Nicholas. When St. Nicholas comes up, O'Neill Caribbean Kitchen gets mentioned quite often, and it's probably because of their authentic dishes. So, what are we waiting for? Let's head inside and give it a try. So there are certainly a lot of Caribbean and authentic choices on the menu, but let's ask an expert to see what we should get. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What is the most popular dish here? Okay, the most popular dish is oxtail. Okay. We also got a jerk chicken or a curry goat. Okay, and how do you prepare the oxtail? The oxtail is pressured for 30 minutes and it's served with rice and peas, mashed potatoes, salad, and fried lantern. Okay, let's go with that. Now you know it's good food when the locals eat here. O'Neill's has definitely become a staple of St. Nicholas dining. You won't be able to ask for food recommendations to try out in St. Nicholas without hearing about O'Neill's. I ordered the oxtail stew, which is one of the most popular dishes here at O'Neill. Gonna give it a taste. It is so tender, flavorful. It truly tastes like the Caribbean. Mmm, so good. Diana and Anita have both lived in St. Nicholas for decades. So, who better to tell us about this city than these two experts of the area? Let's see what they have to say. One of the most beautiful city in Aruba. Well, I'm living here about 70 years already. So, I love everything. <laughs> it's my native country. But <laughs> the hospitality of the people in San Nicolas, of course. And now the arts. If you move around San Nicolas self, everyone enjoy looking at the beautiful sceneries. The restaurants are very tasty. Delicious meals are being served. And there's everything good you can think about. <laughs> 
in San Nicolas. I like to tell them they can come to San Nicolas because it's a lot to see and a lot of art. So it's very nice if they come up this way too, not to stay in town. <laughs> for, especially for tourism, it has improved quite a lot because everybody wants to come up here and see. And then going to Baby Beach, you know, is a must. So they have to pass and see the arts and crafts, whatever we have here on display. And even the locals enjoy looking at it. Yes, I think it's helping because you see a lot of tourists sometimes all over the place walking, looking around, and O'Neill is always full. Because everybody from down that area wants to go to Baby Beach. They don't come to Aruba without going to Baby Beach. And even us as locals, we do go to Baby Beach quite a lot. So on your way up, there's so much to see, so much things to hear. And the people always have a positive impact on the tourists, especially. Over the last few years, St. Nicholas has transformed itself into the cultural capital of Aruba, mainly because of all the murals. The curator of all the murals in St. Nicholas says this one is one of the most special ones. Here's why. A mural that is very important to me, it's called uh, St. Nicholas Saying No More. Yes, it's made by a local artist, King Liqui. Yes, um, and his name is written into it, so you have to go look for it. And also 1961, because that's when it was born. And the lady, he painted a lady, lady's legs, crossing her legs. Yes, and in her shoes, she has tons of people in it. Yes, and she has pantyhose on. Yes, with tons of axes and lights. Yes, and the story is no more. I don't want to be known anymore just for my bad deeds, the red light district. I want to be known for my history, for my people, for my art, for my culture, for my food, and everything else that I have to offer. The city of St. Nicholas wasn't always known for its street art. These works of art weren't always part of the island's culture or identity. Miros is my first love to art. Yes, uh, as you know, we are Arubians. Arubians are not into art. We were into uh, having a good time, enjoying life, dancing, going out, eating. But when you would talk about art, people would go like, no, 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 no. Yes, so it was for a selected crowd, including myself. Yeah, I can be considered to be a regular Joe. Tito Bolivar is the curator of the St. Nicholas murals. It was during a trip to Colombia in 2015 that changed his entire perspective on art. But then I saw a mural that messed up my whole life. It was a 10-story high building with a kit painting on it. And this kit was holding a saxophone. Yes, and on that mural it said, Arte para la vida. That means art for life. And when I saw that, boom. I fell in love with that thing called art. So I went to museums, festivals, to galleries, came back to Aruba, and I was very bored out of my mind because there was no colors to be seen. Yes, and thanks to my bestie Google, um, um, we created the first Aruba Art Fair. The Aruba Art Fair was born in 2016. The fair invites artists to come to the island to express themselves. The festival showcases much more than art. It is a multi-day event consisting of dancing, music, theater, food, and drink. These murals all over the city of St. Nicholas were all born because of the creation of Aruba Art Fair. The goal of the various street art living in this part of the island is to transform the area as the street art district of Aruba. Three years after the first fair, Forbes magazine featured this masterful development and dubbed this city as the street art capital of the Caribbean. The addition of art to St. Nicholas has changed the way visitors of our island explore Aruba. And nowadays we have visitors coming from all over the world. Yes, and the first day they're already in St. Nicholas taking a tour with us, learning about the history of these murals and all that they have to offer. Yes, so St. Nicholas went, uh, went from an unknown place, a place that you don't visit, to people coming to it on their first trip. And that's a huge difference for us here in St. Nicholas because it's instilled pride and it's also creating new commerce in, in the area. 
I hope you enjoyed this very special St. Nicholas edition today. If you'd like on-demand access to all our stories and episodes, head over to our YouTube channel at Our Home, Your Holiday. Signing off right here in downtown St. Nicholas, I'm Yento Liu. We'll see you next time.